Hidden History Holidays, a brief history of St. Patrick's Day. Hello and welcome to this episode in my brand new Hidden History Holidays playlist of Hidden History, the channel that explores what the textbook ignores. I am your host, Andrea Redlin. I'm an author, graphic arts student, cat lover, history lover, obviously, and I love digging into the graveyard of history. History's graveyard, the weirder, the better. It's been a kind of a while since I made a new video, as I've kind of had my hands full with my full-time job, cramming for college exams, writing papers, studying Japanese, but I'm glad to be back to making videos. Hopefully, you're happy I'm back too. If not, well, there's always the Weird History channel that tied you over. By the way, do check them out as they are one of my favorite channels on YouTube when it comes to history. I'll link it below for your convenience. Anyways, I'd like to give a big welcome to my new subscribers and I appreciate every one of you. All 94 of you. I might be a little tiny channel right now, but you never know what the future is going to bring, so I'm just going to continue to unleash my positive thinking and keep creating content for you whenever I can. With my life being so time crunched right now, I appreciate all the support for the little library of videos I've managed to make for you. When I finish college, I know I'll be able to put them out more frequently, but in the meantime, I thank you all for your patience and for standing by me, really. Thank you. I was desperately trying to find an awesome word starting with H to name this holidays playlist, and since pickings were slim, I just went with Hidden History Holidays. I am a history channel after all. It was either that or Harry. Harry Holidays, everyone! Sounds like something my cats would celebrate. So in today's episode, come with me as we head back in time to ba -ba -ba -bum, the United Kingdom about 1500 years ago. So, what is St. Patrick's Day? For those of you not in the know, St. Patty's Day, as it's also known, is the observance of the death of St. Patrick, who just happens to be the patron saint of Ireland. I don't know about you, but to me, observance kind of sounds like a bunch of people sitting in a circle waiting for the man in the middle to die. In addition to being the feast of St. Patrick, this day is also the celebration and commemoration of Christianity coming to Ireland by his influence. Before writing this video, I never knew that. Most of us, myself included, already know that this day is traditionally celebrated on March 17th, features a dude named St. Patrick, and involves people dressing up like the forest threw up. Robin Hood would definitely blend in. Incidentally, I did make a video about him, which I've linked below in the description for you. And that's about all that most people of our time know about St. Patrick's Day. So, how did we go from saintly recognition and prayer to goofy hats and green beer? Well, that's what I'm here for. Though this holiday's been around for a very long time, it wasn't publicly recognized as a holiday until 1903. So let's start with St. Patrick himself. To begin our tale and to give you a bit of background, let me take you back to 4th century Britain, where our hero, St. Patrick, was born. And I bet you all thought he was born in Ireland, didn't you? So did I at first, but the facts I learned in my research tend to be quite surprising. Often. Anyways, the info we have on Patrick is limited, but what we do know is that he was born to parents who were well off, and when he was just a teenager, his family estate was attacked by Irish raiders. As terrifying as that must have been, worse was to come, because the young man was captured by these bandits, who then sold him into slavery. For the next six years, he toiled as a shepherd in the services of a Celtic priest who was a druid. And it was during this lonely time without social media that he turned to his Christian faith for strength. Fortunately, he was able to escape back to England and was reunited with his family, much to my relief. So many of these stories just end with, you will never see your family again. So he eventually became a Christian missionary and returned to Ireland, believing that an angel he dreamed of told him that it was time for him to go back. Upon his return, he spent more than 15 years undergoing religious training, which culminated in his ordination as a priest. 
Though Ireland was mostly pagan and polytheistic at the time, which means they worshipped many gods, St. Patrick took a different approach to introducing Christianity to the Irish culture. Instead of banishing all their traditions, he blended them into Christian rituals. For example, he added a sun symbol to a cross, thus forming a Celtic cross. The sun was a very significant symbol in Irish culture, so the blending of their traditions with those of Christianity helped them to transition more easily to the faith. And while he helped to drive paganism from Ireland, the legend of him driving all snakes from Ireland isn't true, as Ireland has no snakes, at least not native ones. Pets don't count. And, well, I guess the only snakes in Ireland could be politicians? St. Patrick eventually became a bishop, and by the time he died, his fame had spread, just like the pox. The reason St. Patrick's Day is celebrated on March 17th is because that's the day he is believed to have died, which was sometime around 460 AD. Fun fact, he was never actually canonized and made a saint by the Catholic Church. He was considered a saint by popular opinion. Okay. Why do we have all this green stuff on St. Patrick's Day? St. Patrick's Day is globally known as the greenest day of the year, at least aesthetically. Green clothes, green food, lots of other green things appear in stores all over the place, some of which have become iconic. So why is the color green associated with Ireland? Well, there's more than one reason, but I'll just name three. One, the Emerald Isle is one of Ireland's nicknames. Two. The green stripe on the Irish flag represents the Catholics of Ireland, whereas the orange stripe represents the Protestants, and the white stripe stands for the peace between these two Christian denominations. 3. Shamrocks, because those little plants represent spring and good luck. Fun fact, blue used to be the predominant color associated with St. Patrick's Day, but you can thank King Henry VIII with, for this change. You know, the guy who had six wives, you know, and, like, tried to kill them all. When he declared them himself the king of Ireland in an attempt to make Ireland part of England, the Irish people rebelled by using shamrocks, which were green, as a symbol of their identity and loyalty to St. Patrick, thus rejecting the blue associated with the new king. And to this day, green has stuck, and in all the weeks preceding March 17th, it's everywhere. Green beer, which is, unsurprisingly, an American creation, can be traced as far back as 1910. It's thought to have been the culinary innovation of a doctor named Thomas Curtin. The popularity grew rather slowly, but by the 1950s it became a St. Patrick's Day mainstay. But it wasn't until 1985 that it finally made its way across the pond to Ireland, the source of its creation, kind of, you know, wow. You actually can make your own green beer easily at home. All you need to do is add some blue food coloring to your beer because the yellow beer mixed with the blue food coloring will turn it a nice acidic shade of slithering green. Fun fact, the term green beer used to refer to beer that had not fermented long enough for consumption. Kind of like green bananas. You know, I actually like bananas that still have a bit of a green tinge to them though. Nothing like a good Irish banana. Other things in beer are also dyed green. Things like um, rivers. The river of Chicago, Illinois has been colored green every St. Patrick's Day since 1964, also with food coloring. The same thing is done to the water in the fountain in front of the White House, and also in other places too. When it comes to clothing, Ireland is probably the only place where green does not take precedence over all the other colors on the holiday. In Ireland on St. Patrick's Day, the colors of the Irish flag are worn in preference to the predominant green worn in other countries like the U.S. Okay, leprechauns. Other than the little dude on the Lucky Charms box, most of us probably have no idea what a leprechaun actually is or what their significance is. Known as being rather like a mischievous little sprite or a fairy, stories of them have been told since the 8th century. I did not know that. When they were first portrayed as the two to three foot tall creatures that were said to make their homes in tree trunks or underground caves. They are known to be the shoemakers of the world of imaginary fairies, something I discovered when I saw the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold, which is made by Rankin. It, you can usually find it on the Rankin Christmas Stories DVDs. 
So that's how they earned all those little pots of gold they like to hide from us greedy humans. There was once a time in Ireland that leprechauns were real beings, or thought to be real beings. I know that people back then weren't that dumb. And they were portrayed as wearing red and gold, not the green we associate with them today. They're associated with good luck, especially if you catch one. Just like catching a Pokemon, right? But be careful, they're tricky. Shamrocks, yay! The symbol of the shamrock dates back to the 18th century. It means the rebirth of spring. St. Patrick himself is said to have used the three leaves of this little plant to explain the Holy Trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That makes sense. The shamrocks were also worn to church on St. Patrick's Day by poor Irish natives, and the symbolism of the shamrock was later brought to the U.S. by the Irish immigrants as a way to keep their culture alive in a place that often despised them. Yes, there was a time when Irish people were unwelcome in America, which is just sad. That was during the 1800s. Thank goodness we can be proud of being Irish today. Nearly a quarter of my ancestry comes from the UK, and most of that is Irish. Parades! Da 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 da! According to History.com, the first recorded St. Patrick's Day parade was held in America on March 17th, 1601, in St. Augustine, Florida, or what is now known as St. Augustine, Florida. The world's largest and oldest parade takes place every year in New York City, where at least 150,000 marchers follow a painted green line throughout the city to get their Irish on. Fun fact, about 1 in 10 Americans claim to have Irish ancestry, which is about 33 million people. And you wonder why America has so many St. Patty's Day parades. Between you and me, though, I think it's because of the green beer. Corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage, which is an American innovation, was popularized by Irish immigrants because of its cheaper price tag. In Ireland, the traditional St. Patrick's Day feast would have been ham and cabbage or bacon and cabbage. But in those days, bacon was quite expensive in America. And what's really funny is during the same time period, corned beef, which was expensive in Ireland, was cheap in America because Ireland produced it as a luxury export. And that's how, for many Americans, the iconic dish of corned beef and cabbage with a side of rooty vegetables became an essential part of the holiday festivities. Well, my hidden ones, that's all I have for you today in this hidden history holiday episode or hairy holiday episode of Hidden History. Thank you for being here. And as always, I appreciate a share. And if you know of any fascinating holidays you want to hear the origins of, hit me in the comments because you know what? I would love to know about holidays that I have never heard of. Until next time, stay hidden.